Good morning. Welcome to the Pluckerman Presbyterian Church Sunday morning worship service. Uh, Pastor Ian is off this week, taking some very well-deserved vacation time, so the session members are all participating in the service today. We hope you enjoy it. Uh, during the week, I encourage you to follow us on Facebook and also on our new app. And but for now, I encourage you to bow your heads, quiet your hearts and minds, and prepare for worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Jesus asked, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know we do. Then feed my lambs. Jesus asked, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know we do. Then feed my sheep. Jesus asked, do you love me? Lord, you know everything. You know that we love you. Then feed my sheep. Filled with the love and grace of Jesus Christ, we gather to worship him and obey his command to minister to others.
Most loving and merciful Father, we come before you just days after Easter, knowing that the glory of the resurrection is already starting to fade from our hearts. We admit that we have let the busyness of our everyday lives distract us from being the people you are calling us to be. Forgive us when we fail to show and share the good news of your love with others. Draw us closer into a relationship with you so that we know what it means to be your disciples. Hear us as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died so our sins are forgiven. Know that forgiveness and live in that forgiveness. I invite you to take a moment to share the peace of Christ with those around you. Take out your phone and share the peace via text with those who are not with you who are in your heart. The peace of Christ be with you. Our scripture reading is from John 21, verses 1 through 19. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as the day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, do you have any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment for he was stripped for work and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire in place, with fish laid out on it, and bread. Jesus said to him, Bring some of the fish that you may have caught, so Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dare ask of him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them. So with the fish. This is the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to them, feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, 
Do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to them, Tend my sheep. He said it to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you were old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This, he said, is to show by what kind of death he was to glory, glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, follow me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me ask you a question. How often have you pushed really hard to attain a goal, only to stop working once you finally achieved it? I know I have. Take dieting, for example. How many of us have worked for weeks or months to eat smaller portions, cut out sweets, add fruits and vegetables and lean proteins, and exercise daily to reach that ideal weight or fit in that dress or suit for a special occasion. Only what is the common pitfall once we've reached our goal? Yeah, we go right back to our old habits of eating cheeseburgers and junk food and doing very little exercise. Lent is often like that, isn't it? We set our goals on Ash Wednesday and for 40 days we refrain from cursing or smoking or we spend time reading scripture each day, or we find ways to serve others. Only once Easter comes, we tend to drop these wonderful practices and go right back to our old ways. We certainly are not alone. Consider the scripture that was read today. The passage starts just a few days after Christ's crucifixion and resurrection. And where do we find the disciples? right back where they started, literally fishing on the same body of water where three years earlier, Jesus had first met them and called them to follow him. The Sea of Tiberias, also known by such names as Lake Tiberias, Lake Genesaret, Lake Kinneret, and the Sea of Galilee. They have literally returned to the same water, the same boats, the same nets, the same life. And this sea is some 80 miles from Jerusalem where they last encountered Jesus. They didn't just swing by for a visit. This trip would have taken a considerable amount of time in those days. It's as though these disciples gave up, packed up, and returned to their old lives, completely forgetting what Jesus called them to do. They are scared, heartbroken, empty, and in a very dark place in their lives. And that is exactly when Jesus reappears, bringing them direction, hope, light, and love. Jesus appears at dawn and the darkness of the long, empty night begins to vanish. What is the first thing he says to them? Children, do you have any fish? To which they answer, no. Of course, this can be taken in its most literal context. They have been fishing all night and have caught nothing. But this too is perhaps a reminder of what the disciples had been commissioned to do, to be fishers of men, to spread the good news of Jesus. Are they doing this? Have they caught any fish? Have they hooked any new followers? No, they have left the path of discipleship and returned to their old lives, alone on the water. And they are failing miserably. How often have we found ourselves in a similar place, trying to do it on our own, but failing miserably? 
stuck in a rut of doing things the same old way and not finding the results or the joy we seek. Having the uncomfortable feeling that we are lost or that something is missing from our lives. And what do we most often do in this situation? We work harder. We set our sights on finding the perfect partner, planning the dream vacation, buying the bigger house, earning the coveted promotion, achieving the goals we think will bring us the fulfillment we so desperately seek. We, like the disciples, need to be reminded we are looking in the wrong place. In John 14, 6, Jesus tells us, I am the way and the truth and the life. He also tells us in John's gospel that he has come so that we can have an abundant life. A relationship with Jesus is the key to living a fulfilling and abundant life. Every day, he invites us into that relationship to follow him, to be his disciple. But what does that really mean? Then Jesus said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. This, my friends, is a clear illustration of one of the core lessons of discipleship. Apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. Cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. Even though they had been fishing the same way all of their lives, even though they were probably thinking, that won't work, we just tried that, the disciples obeyed and they caught more fish than they could have imagined. We need to be obedient to him for any of our labor to be fruitful. And if we are obedient to him, our riches will be beyond our wildest imagination. When the disciples returned to land, they found Jesus had made a fire and had cooked them breakfast. Ever the servant leader, Jesus once again ministers to his followers. Now let's imagine for a moment that we are Peter. Remember, Peter was the one who was so overjoyed at seeing his Lord again that he couldn't wait for the boat to row back to shore. He threw himself into the sea and swam to Jesus. But Peter was also the one who denied Jesus three times after his arrest. I have to believe that in addition to joy, Peter was filled with guilt and apprehension as he approached Christ. Yet when he reached land, he found that Jesus was waiting not with anger or condemnation, but with welcoming and love. He had cooked breakfast and was inviting Peter and the others to eat with him. How often must we be reminded of this? That no matter how much we deny Christ, no matter how many times we stop following him and try to do things our own way, no matter how many times we turn away from him, when we turn back, he will be right there waiting with open arms to feed us, to care for us, to welcome us back into a relationship with him. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, Son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. Three times Jesus asks Peter if he loves him. And three times Peter affirms that he does. It is through these three affirmations that Jesus gives Peter a way to ask for and receive forgiveness for the three denials. But more than this, Jesus is asking Peter to do something of utmost importance. Feed my sheep. 
Jesus is calling Peter to go out into the world and minister to others, to care for them and tell them the great news about Jesus and his love for them. And then, just as he did at their first meeting three years earlier, Jesus says to Peter, follow me. Friends, where do you find yourself in these days after Easter? After going through Lent with renewed focus and conviction, after celebrating the glory of the resurrection on Easter, do you find yourself transformed and ready to do the work of feeding Christ's sheep? Or are you pretty much back to where you were before Lent? Jesus is calling each and every one of us into a relationship with him. Apart from him, we can do nothing. But if we are obedient to him, he promises our lives will be abundant in ways we cannot imagine. And as part of this obedience, he is calling us to feed his lambs. He is calling us to tend his sheep. He is calling us to be a hub of caring, helping people to know and experience his reconciling love. He is calling us to know God's love, show God's love, share God's love. How will you respond? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us affirm our faith together as it is written in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord above, you are with us every minute of every day, filling us with your spirit. You nourish our bodies and our minds when we are tired and hungry. No matter how many times we stray, Lord, you will always be right there asking, do you love me? Of course we love you, but we are flawed and full of sin. Lord, we praise you for all those times help came from unexpected places, just when we were losing hope. Through those acts of kindness, we feel your presence in our lives even more strongly, and we are humbled. Hear us, O Lord, this day and every day, praying the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
friends, as you prepare to leave this time of worship, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.